My name is Michael Whitehead. I'm the Men's Health Clinical Nurse Consultant here at St Vincent's Hospital, Sydney. Men's health is a very broad term and what it relates to is the bio, psycho and social well-being of boys and men. Men in Australia enjoy comparatively good health outcomes compared to other developed countries. Obviously it is not without its challenges. The greatest challenge that we face in Australia is the health and well-being of our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander men who experience higher mortality and higher morbidity compared to other men within Australia. We know for men, the longest mile is from their front door to another front door, and that other front door might speak to a GP or a new social interaction or a counsellor to talk. So men in Australia have a few key health issues, and I'm just going to go through them with you. So from the biological or physical, prostate cancer is now the most diagnosed cancer in Australia. And so although prostate cancer is typically a disease of ageing, um, and most men will die with rather than of prostate cancer, there are significant um, side effects from prostate cancer treatment that a lot of men are experiencing distress in Australia. So bringing in appropriate psychological support, psychosexual support for those men remains a key challenge and is a challenge that we're taking up here at St Vincent's. The key psychological or mental health challenge for men and boys in Australia is obviously suicide. There are six men who die per day of suicide here in Australia, which represents 75% of all suicides. And, and within our Aboriginal and Indigenous men, that rate is significantly higher compared to the rest of the population. The suicide rate in Australia is double the national road toll. So it is at crisis point. A recent study has shown that 37% of men in Australia report their social connectedness as not being ideal or where they'd like it at. So men, more men report that they have greater numbers of acquaintances through work rather than actual friendships. So who do men talk to, confide in? Where are those intimate platonic relationships? That seems to be a crisis that we're hearing on the ground here at St Vincent's and it is part of our approach. Why loneliness is so prevalent within the Australian population, that's something that needs to be explored further. Certainly within other na Western nations, we're hearing similar things. Within Australian culture, perhaps the old she'll be right mate idiom is both helpful and harmful. So we know that she'll be right is helpful for a man when he's young. It's quite a protective um, barrier around a man. However, she'll be right fails when it's not right anymore. And this is where we want men to realise that maybe events in their life, whether it's physical, mental health or social wellbeing, is causing distress or crisis. The key challenge is not for men to engage with health services, it's for health services to begin to engage with men better. What St Vincent's have done is employed a men's health nurse consultant myself and what we're doing is taking a very purposeful gendered approach to healthcare so applying a men's lens if you like to how we do things so we will start initially within the cancer space so that will involve psychological support if required sexual support if required and social engagement. St Vincent's are bringing in a large multidisciplinary team to support this approach so doctors, nurses, physiotherapists, social workers, clean psych. So all of these people are coming in with men's health titles, applying a men's health lens and keeping men in mind in regards to treatment. This hasn't been done before, this is new, this is exciting. We are going to actually initiate that conversation with them. We're going to initiate the conversations about how's their psychological well-being, how's their sexual well-being. Men do care about their health, but men are a little bit reticent sometimes to volunteer that information. Men have often said and will continue to say that they want a safe place to disclose information. So by having a men's health service, we are signalling that it is men-centric, that this is a safe place to talk. Our clinicians are well trained within um, men's health and men's health delivery. And our clinicians will also initiate those conversations. So instead of waiting for the man to ask, we're going to ask. We're going to bridge that mile for men so that they don't have to walk necessarily to the door or to an issue. 